Running back Miles Sanders wasn't the only Penn State player to be selected by the Eagles in this year's NFL Draft. Enter Sharif Miller, the team's fourth round pick, a defensive end who stands at 6 foot 5, 260 pounds. He's got the size and the length that defensive coordinators would cover and he had a nice productive season to match with 15 tackles for a loss and 7.5 sacks in 2018 whilst enabling the breakout of your tour gross matter. But this pick has been met with mixed reactions. Some are very excited about another Penn State alum on the roster but others a bit concerned about a very raw skill set. But what does that mean for Miller moving forward? What can we expect out of his rookie season? And just how high is that ceiling? My name is Liam Jenkins and this is another episode of Eagles Film Room. Before we get started though guys, make sure you leave a like and hit subscribe if you're new around here and leave a comment down below letting me know what you feel about Sharif Miller after watching this video and if you want your daily dose of Philadelphia sports content, you can read work from myself and all of our writers at Philly Sports Network by heading to phillysportsnetwork.com. We're going to kick things off with some positives and the first one being that Miller has got an explosive first step. He leaps out of his stance and is burstful in every sense of the word. He's a speed guy and this is important to note because it's how he wins the majority of the time. Take a look at this for example, this first step here against Wisconsin, a game where he ate the offensive lineman alive, great first step, brushes off the outside arm and just drives inside to the quarterback. It's a nice simple play, arguably a failed assignment by the tackle but watch the way Miller is able to explode out of his stance, get vertical and then just drive into the backfield completely unhindered. It's an explosive skill set, he's got all the athletic traits that you could want in a defensive end and when he's in tilted alignment when he's got a bit of space between him and the offensive tackle, he's really able to generate momentum, accelerate quickly and blow by. But this play is interesting because they actually pull the right guard. By the time he arrives anywhere near Miller's vicinity, the damage has been done. And he's intelligent as well. At this point, he knows the guard is there. He takes an extra outside step, gets away from his grasp and then wraps up the quarterback. And this is where Miller is dangerous. He's got a very high football IQ. And when you combine that with an explosive first step that we'll see here, he's able to completely get past. That offensive lineman there coming out of a 45 set. He knows he's going to be at a bit of an angle. And if he's sideways on here, look how much further ahead Miller is than the rest of the defensive line. He's driving into the backfield, isn't able to rip under, which is of course something you'd like to see. But on a nice ball rush here, he keeps his eyes in the backfield. And again, this goes back to that football IQ. He's got the burst to drive up, get both hands on the lineman. It's slide protection, but he forces him to open up an angle for Miller to drive through and get straight in the way of the running back. You've seen another example of that here. Miller just reads the game well, especially in run defense. That's why he's got so many tackles for a loss. Keeps his head in the backfield, keeps his body light on his feet and he's able to adjust and weave through traffic, especially considering how many bodies there are flailing and falling in the trenches at any given time. Watch how Miller is able to keep his head up. There's some nice hand usage there. He can't really get them planted, but gets off his block, gets into the right hole and although the quarterback did scramble, he ducks underneath, but Miller would have wrapped him up very easily. There's another example of Miller finding the ball. It's what he does best. He's able to reposition himself and find the ball once he's in the backfield. It's one thing recognising plays like that. It's another thing being able to adjust and that's what Miller does well. The running back slides out. Miller glides inside and gets to the quarterback to bring him down for a sack. He keeps his head up. He watches that running back fly away and knows where that ball is going to be. Here's another example. There's a lot of movement in the backfield but look at the way he actually gets through traffic. If you imagine all of these players as traffic cones right now he's initially running downhill, cuts back upfield and then makes a big time tackle, stopping what would have been a hot knife through butter. Now let's talk about some developmental areas. Miller does have bend despite what a lot of people say. He can drop his shoulders, he does have a lot of hip flexibility and that enables him to really get around tackles. For instance here, his head and shoulders are lower than the pads of the offensive lineman. He then drives around side, he gets his inside free to make a move and he's joined by his teammates to make a big time play. Here's another example of him bending well here. He crashes into that arc and picks up a big time sack and again it all comes back to that burst. He gets off the line well. You see it from another ankle here. A wide alignment. And look at Miller's head. He's looking directly at that outside foot. It's a 45 set. He knows that tackle is going to come out and almost be sideways. And if you're looking sideways at a player running vertically, there's not much you can do. So Miller bursts out of his stance, gets straight downhill, and then curves at the very end. However, his bend 
Hammond isn't consistent, and especially when he's mauled at the line of scrimmage, when he's not given that room to breathe in wide alignments, he can suffer. The tape against Iowa is anything but promising, and you can see just how much space there is between a quarterback standing there completely unfazed, playing a game of Sudoku and missing a wide open touchdown, and Sharif Miller. And the issue is that he can't crash to the arc if the ball rush or the speed rush don't work. For instance, here he relies on that speed, he gets absolutely fronted by the tackle, and he can't bend as a result, but there's no counter. He can't come back inside, he can't spin out of it, there's no rip or anything like that. Just watch this, he's kind of limited, and at that point, there's got to be some fight, there's got to be something to counter that level of punch from the offensive tackle, and there just isn't. He ends up running around the other defensive end on the other side, who's able to get a bit closer, have his arm in position to make a play. Miller is a fairly one-dimensional pass rusher, and because it's so built on speed and burst, he can often burn out quite quickly. So I think that's what happened in this Iowa game. You can see him try to counter, gets put on his backside, and if he cannot generate enough momentum to burst inside, as you can see there, he tries to spin move, but only does so into traffic, then there's not much Miller will be able to bring to the table, and that's where the Eagles will come in, in developing him at the next level. It's putting out the same fire against Maryland. We'll see another example here in that Iowa game. Look how much room he's got to work with. He tries to drive outside. Now, there's a rip move. That's what you like. But now, can he close the arc and get to the quarterback? And somehow, the answer is no. He's generated too much speed and can't manage the gears when he's already at the top one. Here's another play from that same game. There's motor. He's got plenty of hustle. He can't knock the kid's heart. He won't take a play off. Those legs keep churning. He keeps hustling. He stays on his feet until the quarterback is down. But there's just no icing on the cake. And that reminds me so much of Vinnie Curry. But if ball rushing is Miller's main weapon, it better be a good one. And luckily for the Penn State Allen, it certainly is. Here's a play against Pitt. And look at him just pushing to the chest of that tackle. Drive him outside. And then push his way into the backfield again. Watch the hustle. He stays on his feet and doesn't let the play die until he's the one that kills it. That's the way to be a defensive end. You want to finish those plays and make sure you can put the icing on wherever possible. We'll see another example of that power you can generate with the ball rush here. This right tackle just gets blown away. Almost pushed back. That opens the angle and he's able to collapse onto the top of the quarterback. But what happens when he gets minimized? Here's an example of that. The offensive tackle stands firm, has a firm base, and again, there's just nothing he can do because there's no counter moves. There's no way to disengage from that block. Now, you'd assume on stunts to be very efficient because of his speed, but this is a blessing and a curse. Here's an example of the latter where I think he's been burnt out by this point. He doesn't have the acceleration to drive in, takes a bit of a weaker angle, and it's a screen pass somehow incomplete. They generate enough pressure, but Miller wasn't able to get there in time. However, here against Wisconsin, look at the drive to push inside. That's a big boy play to push the guard onto his feet. Now, the guard was kind of lopsided balance already, so it's not too much in the way of sheer strength from Miller, but it's enough of a push, enough of a firm shove out of the way to really create that hole and drive in and then really push down to the quarterback. So it's a strong play from Miller. It's a big time sack, make no mistake about it. And it doesn't just end with sacks. He's so dominant against the run and that's why he's really going to thrive at the next level. He's able to shed that block, steps away, looks for the hole straight down the middle. That's a big tackle for a lot. If he's a player that can't close the arc consistently, that can't collapse into the pocket, then maybe someone that can set the edge and defend the run is what the Eagles need. And it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest considering they are losing Chris Long. He gets into the backfield hastily. He runs with plenty of power, plenty of speed. It's just those pass rushing tools and getting off blocks that he doesn't really have right now. Here's a fantastic quarterback hit though. Now, I don't know what happened there. Somehow that ball gets thrown into the air. That's a very wild once in a lifetime type play. But watch how Miller is able to get off here. A tremendous first step. His hands off the grass. He uses some nice hand movement when in contact, but brushes past again with pure speed. If that tackle is horizontally, Miller's going to run vertically past him and his play will do the talking. He's got strength to his game as well. There's another big tackle for a loss. Stonewall's a running back on that play. But here we're going to see an example of him using his length well, which is something that would be pivotal against the run. He's got those long rangey arms where even if the tackle is trying to push him outside the arc, look how he's able to drive that back inside and make a play. That's a strong effort play from Sharif Miller. And that's what you want to see. Someone that knows the traits he has and at six foot five, 260 pounds. He's got plenty of them. He's a rangy defensive end that has plenty of speed to him. The problem is, as I said, that he doesn't have that vast array of pass rushing moves. And if he can't win with the bull rush, he can't win with the speed rush, he's not going to be effective. And if he consistently tries to win with them, like we saw at Penn State, he can burn out quickly and that can be a downgrade. What the Eagles have to do here is develop that. Right now, they've got Josh Sweat, Joe Ostman, 
and Sharif Miller. It wouldn't surprise me if they do go out and acquire someone like Ziggy Anza just to man that right hand side alongside Vinny Curry while these guys develop. Miller has got potential to be a very, very impressive run defender at the next level. He's got all the athletic traits. He's got the awareness. He's got the mental processing. It's just a case of developing those counter moves, developing the pass rushing moves and really chiseling away at that game, which as of right now remains very raw. But make no mistake, within three to four years, Sharif Miller could be a very solid run defender in the Jim Schwartz pass rushing rotation. And that's exactly what they may want, given the amount of electricity they already have from a guy like Derek Barnett and potentially Josh Sweat and Joe Osman if they can develop. But what do you think, guys? Let me know how you feel about the pick and was I right or wrong on the evaluation? Let me know what you've seen on the tape down in the comments below. Thank you so much for all of your support. The race to 10,000 subscribers is well and truly on. It really does mean the world to me. From all of us here at Philly Sports Network, thank you for giving us this platform. If you do want to buy merchandise, we do have shirts and hoodies available at a link down in our description. And don't forget again to check out our content daily at phillysportsnetwork.com. You can follow me on Twitter at LiamJenkins21, but I'll see you next time for another episode of Eagles Film Room.